Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Rosa is the principal of a local high school. She started her career as a history teacher at the same school 20 years ago. She's 45 years old. She lives with her son, David, in a big house that she inherited from her parents. Rosa's husband left the house a long time ago. She's been left alone with the little boy in that big house. She didn't know what to do. She even considered to give away her child. But after a while, Rosa found out that it isn't impossible to move on with her life. It'll be hard for sure, but it will not be impossible. Rosa divided her time between her job and the school and taking care of her son. She was always saying to herself that she's sure that he'll make her proud someday. He'll go to college to become a lawyer or a doctor. She'll educate him to make sure of that. Rosa was so tough on her son. She wanted him to be a man, to face life and not be a coward like his father who ran away from the responsibility. But that had a bad effect on David. As a little boy, David was always scared of his mother. Rosa knew that, but she thought that all boys in that age should be scared of them. Besides, being scared of me doesn't mean he doesn't love me. For sure, he'll get that when he grows up. But didn't move on easily. After he turned 17 years old, he found out that he still can't sleep well at night. He's been seeing his mother yelling at him in his dreams. David never talked about his nightmares. David was always acting perfect in front of his mother because he didn't know how she would react if she knows that he still has childhood issues until now. When David finished his high school, he applied for all the far universities and made sure that finally he'd be away from his mother. But David didn't get accepted in any university. His mother was very upset about that. They waited for any letter coming by mail, but David was opening the mailbox every day to find some bills and some useless papers. Finally, he found a way to leave the house. His friend Max told him about a new acting school. It opened this year and they'll accept everybody. David was excited for that idea. He told his mother, but she didn't approve. She said, acting, that's ridiculous. You should have a job. David, I don't want to work now. I want to go to the acting school with Max. Rosa said, Max, I understand now. You don't want to go to acting school. You want to be with Max so you can drink and smoke and not even go to class. He replied, that won't happen. I want to do something. Rosa went silent and David continued, please, mom, consider it as a last chance. Rosa said, okay, I'll think about it. When Rosa told David that she approved to finance his study in the acting school, he was excited and happy. Rosa looked at him and said, Don't let your happiness make you forget that I have one condition. If you fail, as usual, this adventure with Max in the acting school will end immediately. David took his study seriously. He passed the first year at the school at the top of his class. For the first time, Rosa felt proud of her son. In the second year, David was in a relationship with a classmate named Sarah. However, she was his classmate. Max was the one who introduced her to him. They liked each other and then been together ever since. But David never told his mother about Sarah. Also, he told Max not to do so. One day, Sarah asked David why he didn't introduce her to his mother yet, like what she'd done in the last weekend with her parents were in the city. David tried to avoid Sarah's question, but she never gave up asking until one day David told Sarah about his nightmares. He also told her that he's still suffering this issue right now, and this is the first time that he talks with anyone about it. Sarah was shocked. She hugged him and said, You must forget that so you can have a normal life. David said, I've tried, but nothing's working. One day, David was in a party with his friends. Max told him that he needs to try that new drug. David said to him, No, Max, I've promised my mother no drugs. Max said, You're thinking a lot about your mother. This will help you forget about her for a while. David thought that it was a nice idea to forget about his mother for a few hours without thinking. He took the pill from Max's hand and put it in his mouth. Sarah was shocked, but when she saw him joyfully dancing after a few seconds, she realized that she never saw him that happy before. At that night, David slept without having any bad dreams. As Max promised, he did forget his mother. In the morning, Sarah told David that what happened yesterday shouldn't happen again. David said, yes, for sure. It was a party thing. It will not happen again, I promise. A few weeks later, David missed the feeling of that pill. He went to Max behind Sarah's back and asked him to give him another pill. Max gave the pill to his friend and told him to be careful with using this thing. David said, sure, don't worry, I can handle it. Without even realizing, David became addicted to those pills. Sarah and Max were the first who noticed. Sarah told David that he needs to stop because she's pregnant. 
David was shocked for a moment, but then he looked very happy. Sarah told him that he needs to focus and be clean so he can take care of his child. David agreed to get help. At first, they thought about a rehabilitation center, but soon they found out that they didn't have enough money for that. Sarah told him that the only way to do it will be to move back to his mother's house. They didn't have enough money, and no one of them is able to work at that time. And on top of that, David needed help. David acted on Sarah's advice. He returned home. At first, he didn't tell his mother what the real problem was. He just told her that he didn't feel so good in the last few days. He also told her about this girl, Sarah. He smiled at her face and said, you should meet her one day. It didn't take Rosa too long to realize that her son was addicted. When she found out, she looked in his room and called Sarah. She thought she could help. When Sarah got in Rosa's house, she didn't have any choice but telling her the truth. She told her all the story. Rosa was shocked. She said, there's no way that all happened in such a short time. He never told me that you were pregnant. Rosa asked Sarah to stay and help her son David. He was getting better. He told his mother that when he gets clean, he wants to marry Sarah, get a job, and take care of his kid. Everything was going okay until one day David sneaked while Rosa and Sarah were sleeping and brought some pills for himself. The next morning, Rosa found David dead by overdose. A few months after this tragic accident, Sarah was still living in Rosa's house with her little boy David. She named him after his father. One day, Rosa retired from her job. She stayed home with her grandson and her daughter-in-law, but she didn't speak to them so much, especially after the death of her son. One day, the young David was crying while Rosa was trying to read. Rosa stood up and said to Sarah angrily, Why is he crying? She didn't let her answer and continued, You can't take care of this baby. Sarah said, I know how to take care of my baby. Rosa said, Yes, I know. Just look how you took care of his father. Sarah was about to talk when Rosa yelled at her, saying, I want you out of my house, you and your kid. I don't want to see either of you again. I don't want anything to remind me of him again. Sarah took the baby and went to her parents' house. Her parents decided to help her and her boy as well. Using his mother's wealthy family money, David was educated in the finest school, and he went to a famous university also. A few years later, Rosa was sitting at home alone watching the TV, and she saw an interview with this young businessman who looked just like her son David. The young businessman has created a mobile application to transfer money easily across the states, and that application made him a rich man. She also noticed that he's still living with his mother, and he's talking about her with respect. The interview seemed interesting to Rosa, so she approached to the TV to read the name of this young businessman. She turned white from the shock. She recognized the name immediately. That young businessman was her grandson David, the same one she kicked out of his mother years ago. Rosa never thought that Sarah and young David could make it, especially without her help. But she found out she was wrong. She was wrong about the way she used to raise her son, after all. Sarah is living happily with a successful young boy, and Rosa is still sitting here alone and sad. If you want to succeed, you must labor harder and suffer more than anyone else, according to a popular proverb. That is, at most, a half-truth. One of the most typical aha moments I've ever heard from people who have accomplished great things in their lives and careers was when they recognized that working hard was not enough to succeed, and that it was often a waste of time and energy. From that standpoint, I've compiled a list of three things that are equally as vital, if not more vital, than hard effort when it comes to obtaining success. If you looked at every single individual in the world who's deemed a failure, especially by themselves, you'd notice that they all have one thing in common, a lack of purpose. They have no idea where they're headed. They have no idea why they do what they do, and they don't believe there is one. They're only interested in short-term pleasures, such as food or sex, and these are the only things that keep them going. They're merely acting on the animal part of their nature. As a result, they're unable to engage in long-term thought or personal introspection in the same way that humans can. There's no need to look at extreme cases of failure to diagnose the sickness of purposelessness. If you're not always conscious, you'll find yourself doing something and not knowing why. Momentum can be a nice friend, but it can also be a friend who wastes a lot of time if you don't keep an eye on it. Keeping in mind that whenever you begin an action, you'll be performing it for the rest of your life. Unless, of course, something inside or outside of you urges you to change your viewpoint. When you begin working on something without knowing exactly what you want to achieve, it may take hours or days of hard labor before you understand that it isn't what you should be doing. Don't be a hard-working, busy person. Instead, be a meticulous planner who takes deliberate action. Thanks for watching. 
please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.